What's up guys, TechLab here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a graphics card that needs no introduction. This is the NVIDIA GTX 1060, and according to the Steam hardware surveys, it's one of the most popular graphics cards used. But what kind of experience are gamers getting with them? Let's find out. So back in 2014, NVIDIA seriously did something right with the release of the 10 series GTX cards. The bigger brother to this 1060 is the 1080 Ti, and even today, after eight long years, it's still considered as an absolute beast. Not only that, being one of the budget ranges at the time, the 1060 is still one of the most popular graphics cards on the Steam hardware survey, which means that there's millions of these out there sitting in gaming machines with people enjoying them. As an entry-level GPU, the GTX 1060 would have cost you between 250 and 300 pounds, now that sounds reasonably cheap now, but back then it would have been a hefty price to pay. There were two major variances of the GTX 1060, a 3GB version and a 6GB version, and it's safe to say with the enhancements in the gaming world, the 6GB version has aged the best. The model we have here today is the Gigabyte WinForce 6GB, which offers a quiet and efficient gaming experience, and we've been using this for a while now with no issues. As always, we've had this card in our benching system now for over a week, so let's take a look at some of the benchmarks and see how it performs in games today.
we can tell from those benchmarks, there is a reason why this card is so popular. It actually did really, really well. The only real game that it actually struggled with in terms of what we tested was Crisis Remastered. And that game is actually quite demanding on any card. But what do we need to do to be able to actually get that a little bit more playable and closer to that 60 frames per second? <laughs> As we can see, we're currently averaging around 45 frames per second, which goes in line with the benchmarks that we did. And what's even worse is that our frame time, they're actually jumping all over the place. We've got a lot of stuttering there, which can affect the gameplay sometimes, particularly when we're in heated combat kind of moments. But let's take a look at what it's gonna to take for us to actually get that up to around 60 frames per second. This is obviously running in 1080p high, so the first thing we should do is probably sacrifice some of those graphics. Changing the graphics down from high to medium seems to have had a huge effect. We're now actually averaging around 120 frames per second, so we've more than doubled our frames. And our, time, our frame time is actually stabilizing out and much smoother with just the odd little blip. You can actually tell as well inside the game, it's a lot more smoother, even though you can't really tell that much in terms of graphical detail. I think what it actually does is probably just turns down some of more of the features, like these kind of grass bits and all the kind of different leaves, but it's actually looking pretty good anyway. So that's all it took for this eight-year-old card to be able to reach over 60 frames per second. Now with a little bit of actual customization on those graphics settings, you could probably get it to have a nice constant 60 frames per second without sacrificing too much at all really, although the game just looks stunning as this. Now if this is with one of the most demanding games that we've actually benchmarked, what do you think it'll actually do if we actually put it against one of the most demanding games out there? And by that we mean Cyberpunk 2077. It has got to be one of the most demanding games out there. It looks stunning, it has really high settings, and as predicted, it's not doing too well. It's, we're currently averaging around 33 frames per second, which is probably more than I expected for an eight-year-old budget card or entry-level card, but it is actually playable. I mean, 30 frames per second is quite playable. This is while we're driving around. I tend to find that when you're actually outside of the car, things get a little bit higher in terms of frames. So slowly starting to increase, but we're pretty much sticking around there. We're nearly hitting 40 frames per second. And again, this is running in 1080p high. So what can we actually do to this game to get it to run a little bit better? Now, unlike Crisis Remastered, we may not have to actually change any of the quality settings at all. The GTX 1060, like a lot of the Radeon cards and newer generations, is supported by AMD's FSR. And this game has it, so if we turn on FSR, we'll see how much we can gain. Running FSR in its balanced mode, we can actually see that we have had a great increase in performance, although you can tell the quality is slightly decreased, particularly at distance. When we're actually up close and it's rendering things, it's not too bad, it looks pretty much the same. So it is more than playable and we're actually reaching that magical 60 FPS just now. It's at about 65, 69, 72, so it's increasing depending on the environment we're in and we've got a pretty smooth frame time. This actually makes this card super impressive and again, there's no wonder that it's so popular with gamers. Nvidia really did do something magical with the 10 series with cards like this. It means they've had such a good life and it's such a long life as well, particularly when we can implement new technologies that are being put out there by even their own competitors, AMD. It's just gonna make this all the better. Now considering how well the GTX 1060 performed in all of those modern games, we wanted to actually compare it to something if you were looking at the new market. Now these GTX 1060s, particularly the six gigabyte versions, can be got for around 100 to 150 pounds. They're probably not as low as we would like at the moment, but we are just coming to the end of the GPU crisis, so they're only gonna get lower. So what can you actually get new at a roughly the same price? The only thing, unfortunately, is this. This is the RX 6500 XT that we recently took a look at. We'll put a link to the top if you wanna go into more detail on this. These can actually be picked up from about 150 to 250 pounds. This model in particular is the Sapphire Pulse. And last time we checked, it was about 220 if you were to buy it new. We decided to pit them together, a benchmark for benchmark, using the exact same games, the exact same settings, and see how well they did. As you can see from the chart, the GTX 1060 actually gave the RX 6500 XT a bit of a run for its money. 
In most of the games, the RX just pulls ahead, but for some of them, the GTX 1060 actually outperforms it. Now you do need to take into consideration that during our test we are running in a Gen 3 system, something the RX 6500 XT does not like due to the fact of its limited PCI lanes. So yes, the RX card can actually get some more performance out if you're running on a more modern platform with Gen 4, but for most people that will be purchasing at this kind of range, they're going to be using older systems, so we thought that that test was more fair. And that is something worth noting when you come to purchase one of these cards. Yes, the GTX 1060 is going to be cheaper, but it's not going to have as much of a lifespan, particularly when you start upgrading the rest of your system, the RX 6500 XT is going to start pulling away. But overall, the GTX 1060 has really impressed us. It's a card that was obviously made of some kind of magic, and probably Nvidia at the time realised it was something hard to beat going forward. I know that the current generations, the 2060 series and the 3060 series, are obviously going to be far more superior to this, but are they going to last as long? Are you going to be able to get eight years worth of great gaming out of a 3060? We're not sure yet. We'll see in eight years. And that pretty much brings us to the end of our video. Let us know in the comments what you think about these cards. Do you have a GTX 1060? Are you looking to upgrade soon? And what are you going to go for if you are? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.